हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम अगेन टू माय चैनल फाइव साई दिस इज प्रॉब्लम नंबर थर्टीन ऑन एल एस एंड जे जे कपलिंग इन दिस प्रॉब्लम वी हैव टू फाइंड द अलाउड स्पेक्ट्रल टर्म्स फॉर टू नॉन इक्वलेंट पी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड फॉर टू इक्वलेंट पी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ओके एंड दैट इज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ पॉलिज एक्सक्लूजन प्रिंसिपल सो द फर्स्ट पार्ट वी हैव टू फाइंड फॉर टू नॉन इक्वलेंट इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ओके टू नॉन इक्विलेंट पी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स नो वॉट आर इक्वलेंट एंड नॉन इक्वलेंट पी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी हैव टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड वन बिलोंग्स टू टू पी एंड द अदर बिलोंग्स टू थ्री पी नो दीज टू पी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दे आर नॉन इक्वलेंट इलेक्ट्रॉन वाई बिकॉज इफ इफ यू सी फॉर बोथ ऑफ दैम द प्रिंसिपल क्वांटम नंबर इज डिफरेंट द प्रिंसिपल क्वांटम नंबर फॉर दिस इज टू एंड द प्रिंसिपल क्वांटम नंबर फॉर दिस इज थ्री सो इट मीन्स इफ यू यूज पॉलिज एक्सक्लूजन प्रिंसिपल देन the other set of uh, quantum numbers can be same for both the electrons okay for example the uh, spin quantum number or the azimuthal quantum number okay and when we uh, say about two equivalent electrons uh, that is uh, written here that is p square p2 configuration <coughs> in this case because uh, the principal quantum number uh, is same for both the uh, both the electrons it means Uh, the uh, out of uh, the other uh, quantum numbers at least one should be different that we already know according to the polys exclusion principle which say that no two electrons in a, in a system can be in the same energy state so it means that at least one quantum number should be different okay so uh, let's do uh, this uh, part one okay <coughs> so suppose we have two different or two non equivalent p electrons so for the first electron the value of spin quantum number that will be equal to 1 by 2 and for the second one the value will also be 1 by 2 okay what about the l values because both are p electrons so the value of azimuthal quantum number or orbital quantum number that is equal to sp so it will be 1 and l2 that for the second electron also be equal to 1 okay so we have our numbers okay <clears throat> now we have to calculate the value of capital s and capital l and then we have to apply the ls coupling okay <clears throat> now uh, the possible values of s capital s r they are from s1 minus s2 <coughs> to s1 minus s2 plus 1 and then up to s1 plus s2 okay so if we apply this rule <coughs> then the possible values of s would be that is from s1 minus s2 that means so 1 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 up to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 so the values of uh, capital s would be equal to 0 or 1 so <coughs> if the value of capital s is 0 and 1 it means the multiplicity the multiplicity will be equal to which is equal to 2s plus 1 
it will be if we put uh, s is equal to zero here the multiplicity will be one and then the multiplicity will be three okay if you put one in this formula we'll get three okay so we have a singlet and a triplet okay singlet and triplet <clears throat> now the possible values of capital L are the possible value of capital L are from L1 minus L2 L1 minus L2 then plus 1 up to L1 plus L2 okay so the value of uh, capital L will then be equal to L1 minus L2. Uh, we have the value of L is equal to 1. So it will uh, uh, start from 1 minus 1. And then 1 minus 1 plus 1. And then 1 plus 1. Okay, so the possible values of L would then be 0 and then 1 and then 2. So for if if we have uh, the value of capital L is equal to 0, then it would be a S state. For uh, L is equal to 1, it will be a P state and for 2, it will be a SP, it's a D state. Okay. So, in all, we should have six terms. Have in all six terms. Okay. How can we have six terms? Because uh, for multiplicity uh, one, we have value of sp and d and for multiplicity 3 we have a value of spd so total of six terms okay <coughs> so <coughs> we have the value of s is equal to uh, equal to um, 0 and 1 and value of uh, l uh, equal to uh, 0 1 and 2 right so it means we have one s one p and one d state and also we have three s where one this one and this three these are multiplicity three p and then 3d okay <clears throat> now uh, uh, we have to uh, do it further and we have to apply the ls coupling it means we have to apply the spin orbit interaction so on applying spin orbit interaction <coughs> we have j values okay so the values of j this starts from capital l minus s to capital l plus s right so first of all we have to calculate these values for the singlet terms okay so for singlet terms okay so for singlet terms we have the first would be capital s is equal to 0 and capital l is equal to 0 
if capital L is equal to 0 and capital L is equal to 0, then value of J would also be equal to 0. And uh, this is a singlet state. So the term will be 1 as 0. Okay. The second one is for S is equal to 0 and then L is equal to 1. So the values of J would be equal to 1 minus S to 1 plus S and it means we uh, will have only one value and that is a is equal to 1. So uh, it would be like 1 uh, because L is equal to 2. So it's a P state and J is 1. So we must write it 1 P 1. Okay, let's move on to the next page. <coughs> now the third one for it S is equal to 0 and L is equal to 2. So the only value possible for j uh, that is equal to j is equal to 2. Okay. So the term will be uh, multiplicity is 1. Uh, L is equal to 2. So it's a d state and j is equal to 2. So that must be equal to 1 d 2. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now for the triplet states. Okay. for for triplet terms for first we have s is equal to 1 and l is equal to 0 if s is equal to 1 l is equal to 0 the only j values uh, possible is 1 so we must write it 1 s 1 okay for s is equal to 1 and l is equal to 1 right so j values uh, uh, will be from 1 minus 1 to 1 plus 1 so the value of j will be uh, 0 and then 1 and then 2 okay so the possible terms <coughs> will be uh, 1 p 0 then 1 p 1 and then uh, 1 p 2 okay these three terms are possible for this and the last one s is equal to 1 and l is equal to 2 for s is equal to 1 and l is equal to 2, we have the value of j that is from 2 minus 1 to 2 plus 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So the values will be 1, 2 and 3. So the possible values will be uh, s is uh, 1. Mm, I think I have made a mistake. Uh, we must write... Uh, uh, this is multiplicity so we must write 3 here okay and 3 here because it's a triplet so we must have to write 3 here so the values will be 3 d1 and then 3 d2 and then 3 d3 okay so these are the possible values for two uh, possible terms for two non-equivalent electrons okay so let's uh, let's write them all okay we have 1s0 and 1p1 so we have the possible terms <coughs> are 1s0 and 1p1 we have 1s0 1p1 then 1d2 then uh, 3s1 right and then uh, 3p0 1 2 and then 3d1 2 3 okay so this is uh, uh, the 
the final answer for the part one. So for uh, two equivalent electrons, for example, the for from a P two configuration. Okay, so if we have two uh, p uh, uh, two p electrons which are equivalent electrons, like equivalent electron means they are from they belong from the same shell. If you remember from the previous lectures, you uh, you see that we have already uh, did, uh, done this problem and that is uh, using a breed scheme. Okay, uh, so I will. Uh, <coughs> Put the link of uh, uh, the that 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 lecture in the description, and from there you can uh, see how to find the uh, the terms for two equivalent electrons. Okay, so that is all for today. Okay, bye.